Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, here we are for another episode of uh, Sage Advice from the Tractor Shed. Have you ever noticed how some of your favorite homesteading channels all at once just went off the rails? Okay. Uh, I started watching homestead videos long before I started doing homestead videos. Uh, Crystal and I have lived this Appalachian homestead lifestyle our entire marriage. So, and come February, we've been married 40 years. So it's a it's a lifestyle that we've embraced. But we have watched homesteading channels. I started really started watching homesteading channels probably about 2010 so I've been watching them for I don't know this is 2024 for 14 years I've been watching different homesteading channels and uh, some were my favorites that are no longer my favorites because they went plumb off the rails okay and and uh, I still have some favorites I love Al Lumna's channel he uh, he hasn't gone off the rails and I've been watching him I think since 2013 okay watched them since 2013 so yeah I, I really like their channel they're always positive they're always doing stuff it's I really like it uh, I've found two new channels since since I've been watching here lately I started watching so the land and uh, Holler Homestead. I really, I really like those channels. But I, what I really like about them is they haven't gone off the rails like some of the other YouTube channels. Let's talk about that. Now, some of my favorite, used to be favorite YouTube channels that I just unsubscribed from. I just, you know, they, they were just totally off the rails about stuff. Uh, they've They've fallen into the conspiracy theory plots against them, and there's always somebody coming and and attacking them. Or yeah, it's I call it fear porn. Okay, what what they practice on their channel is fear porn. They want you to come, and they do it for clicks. I, I don't think that they're that crazy. I don't I don't think they've went that far off the rails. I think they do it for clicks. Uh, I try not to do that. Uh, it's one of those things that sometimes I'll put something on and it, it's kind of clickbaity, but but it's not fear porn. I just I just can't handle the fear porn. Uh, it's just one of those things that that yeah they just have gone off the rails and. Every episode's like that. There's always some clickbait thing about something terrible that's happened to them. Uh, you know, you could call it suffering porn. Uh, they're always having some problem. And, yeah, that's not about homesteading. I want to see them raising the garden and taking care of their animals and, and uh, building on their homestead, you know, putting in their infrastructure and and that's what I want to see. I, I could care less about all that other crap. I just really could. But there's a reason this happens. I've had psychology and education courses out the yang. And uh, there's a reason this type of stuff happens. Homesteaders have a tendency to be in echo chambers. And let's talk about what an echo chamber is. It is so easy to to be caught up in an echo chamber. Homesteaders are uh, are people who have opinions, but sometimes those opinions get caught. Okay, they they have opinions that that they hold and they hold on to them very tight, and they they tend to gravitate toward people who have the same opinions. And that creates a problem, okay? It, it creates an inability to see cognitive dissonance. Things that are, things that are wrong. It, it limits your perspective. You need perspective uh, 
the way humans look at things, we look at things from all different perspectives. Uh, I'm going to see things different than you do. You're going to see things different than I do. And together, we can be stronger by seeing things in a different perspective and putting ourselves in the other person's shoes. Echo chambers cause us to be within a bubble of information that is only the information that we want to have. And sometimes that leaves a, leads us to something called confirmation bias. In other words, we hear information about what we want to hear, but the truth is not that. And it causes us to move toward believing myths and uh, things that are not true. Uh, we'll talk about that when it comes to homesteaders, but this is just what an echo chamber is. In an echo chamber, you only hear those ideas echoed back to you that are like the ideas that you have. Uh, similar people want to get together. They do that. They just want to be together as, as one thing thought mind, one hive mind, if you want to think about it like that. They, they see the world in, in their colors only. They may only see red and green, where everybody else might see black, white, red, green, yellow, purple. Alright? So, they look at the world based on their world view, not just based on reality. And that, that hurts you. That hurts you uh, mentally, it hurts you psychologically, it injures the way you're able to process information. Okay, it causes your brain to always go to that. So when you see something that fits your bias, immediately that becomes fact to you. Immediately, it becomes fact to you. And you delve into a world in which you start to become isolated. And isolation makes it worse. It amplifies these prob this, this confirmation bias. It amplifies it to the point that you get that you cannot change what you think. It hurts you intellectually. It hurts you socially. It hurts you emotionally. It's, it's a unending cycle. One of the worst things that an echo chamber does is it distorts reality. It allows you to pick up information that may not match reality. You can call it disinformation, but disinformation is, is intended. I'm talking about getting the wrong ideas about things even though, uh, even though there are other other information that would contradict it, you never hear that. So it amplifies those things that are misinformation or information that you got incorrect, but it ingrains it in you. It causes you to, uh, to become isolated and start to move away from people. Uh, it'll break up families. It's, it's a, these echo chambers are are really really hard they are hard to uh, break away from but now let's talk about echo chambers when it relates to homesteaders now when we talk about homesteading uh, homesteaders have their own version of an echo chamber uh, I call it an information silo and and there's all kinds of stuff on the internet about information silos but but I want to make this information silo specifically about homesteaders uh, homesteaders get caught up in the day-to-day -day grind of doing the things that we do uh, whether it's animals or gardens or property maintenance or home maintenance or tractors or whatever we get caught up in, in these uh, information silos and we do the things that we've always done. Me, I'm, I'm, a good, I'm a good example. I have a tendency to want a row crop garden. Okay, that's the way I was raised. I was raised to row crop. Uh, some of the other forms of gardening I've tried over the years, but I haven't been successful with. So I'm kind of resistant to change.
when I think about doing other things. Okay, so I'm resistant to change. That's one of the problems that homesteads fall into. And it's one of the problems that that homesteaders see. They, they, they're in an information silo. The people who watch my channel all garden. Okay? Pretty much all of them garden, or they garden when they were younger. And they remember about gardening, and they like to watch me do stuff. They like to watch it when I'm when I'm gardening and when they comment it's all pretty self self affirming okay uh, very few negative non like clicks do I get uh, most of mine I get 30 or 40 like buttons pushed and no dislike buttons pushed because the people who watch my channel are a lot like me they come to the channel because they have this, a lot of the same viewpoints. You'd be surprised at how many people have different viewpoints that I do that come to our channel and think that I have their viewpoint. And that's, that's okay. I love people that have a lot of different viewpoints. That's what I want. Okay? So, let's talk about the other parts. When we look at homesteader silos, information silos, we tend to get in this block of things that that we think this thing and other people think something else and we tend to isolate ourselves from them let's let's take an example me I've never been to a homesteader conference I'm an introvert okay I'm an introvert I'm sure there will be a lot of people with differing ideas than me at a homesteader conference. But the conferences I would go to need to be folks who are not going to be the in-your-face kind of people. I don't do good with the in-your-face kind of people. I tell them where to go. So there are a lot of folks who like to be confrontational. And their channel has run off the rails because of that. I don't, I don't understand why they've moved to that extreme, and it could be that they are in a, in a homestead silo. And, and I'll explain why that's important here in just a minute. So, as a homesteader, we get information based on the other channels that we watch, basically, anymore. Uh, what we search on the internet. You know that everything on the internet is true, right? Everything? on the internet is true. So so we do all this stuff where we look at the internet and we look at other homesteading channels, we see what they're doing, we see what we're doing, we compare ourselves to them and you can't compare yourself to them. You can't consider yourself like them. You're not. You're an individual. That's the problem with silos. We're individuals. If we fit ourselves into a silo, then we cut off the rest of what we hear or see to the point that we cannot make an informed decision. It hurts us. Like, I'll never forget, I was doing a, a video about, uh, about raising, raising uh, eggplant. Now, around here, myself, in order to raise eggplant, in order to raise eggplant, I have to spray it with an insecticide because the bugs just eat it off till there ain't a leaf on it. Okay, so I have to spray eggplant if I want to get any eggplant. Well, I was doing a video on how to raise eggplant, and uh, I got a comment. Well, I was doing good till you got out that spray, and now you started spraying, and you've killed, you're going to kill the bees, and this, that, and the other, and, and I'm going to unsubscribe from your channel. You're just a dumbass. Well, okay. Okay. There's that information silo. She couldn't see that in order for me to have eggplant, the only way I can have eggplant, which I've quit raising here on the farm, because that's the only way I can have it. Okay? That's the only way I can have it is if I spray. I haven't sprayed in about three years anything. I've quit raising crops that I have to spray. So, 
yeah, it causes these problems. And the biggest problem it causes is distrust. Let's talk about that. Distrust is an easy pitfall to fall into. Whether it's distrust of a government, distrust of people who are different from you, distrust of, uh, of your abilities, distrust of your friends or your family members. Uh, one of the big things that being in these silos creates, it creates an us against them mentality. When in reality, it should never be us against them. Never. Never, never, never. We're in America. Okay? This is, we live in a democracy. It should never be us against them. If you've acquired an us against them mentality, you're probably in a silo. Okay? It affects your ability to cognitively see the things that are outside. It makes you more prone to mythological thinking. Okay? Thinking about those things that are that are not true or half-truths. Half-truths are worse, are worse than, a, than a false truth. Okay? Half-truths are worse than a false truth because there's some kernel of information there that's true, but the other kernels are false. So you get the total wrong thought process. That has happened over and over and over. And these information silos cause that. Now let's relate the silo to the way silos actually work on a farm. When I was a kid, my Uncle Willie had a silo that he put silage in. Okay? It was a, a corn silage. And what we did was we went through and we, we picked the corn stalks and all and it chopped it up. As you picked it, he had a machine for his tractor and it chopped up. This was probably 1976 or 77. So, and it chopped it up and then we put it on a conveyor and it went up into the silo and it dumped into a big tall silo. If you're driving down the road, for those of you that are not farmers, you'll see beside a barn, you'll see a great big structure with a domed roof. That's a silo. Okay? And that's something dangerous to get into. You can climb up the ladder and get in there, but that's a dangerous, dangerous thing, and I'm going to explain that. Uh, the silo, you put the corn in there, and it fermented inside the silo. It gave off a gas, and the, the thing had to be vented, because if it wasn't vented, it would blow up from methane gas. And so, you would get the silage down there, and then what happened was there's a thing that turns and drops the silage out and a conveyor belt that came and the cows came and fed, okay, from that silo in the wintertime. So they ate, they ate the corn, they ate the, the cobs, they ate the stalks, they ate the leaves, okay, it was all fermented in that silo. But if you got up in that silo and got in it, some farmers walked the grain down. There's something called walking the grain down. They will put so much in there and then get up in there and walk it down. One of the most dangerous things in the world. My Uncle Willie would never let us do that. Okay? One of the most dangerous things in the world because what happens is that silage will get a void in it. Okay? For some reason there will be a lot of it and there will be a void. And you'll get up there Mario Andretti down the road here there is a thing when you walk the grain down, there will be voids. So you can get up in there and step on a place and that void will compress all at once and you go down into it. You can be over your head and all you've got is 90 seconds. Okay? You go down, you go, ah! And you don't have any air and you get down in there 90 seconds, you ain't coming out. Kill you dead as a hammer. It's a dangerous, dangerous thing to walk down the grain in the top of the silo. Dangerous as a cock gun. So, homesteaders get caught in that. 
let's say you don't get covered plumb up. All right? But you get in up to your waist, and all this grain around you is pushing in. You can't pull yourself up out of that. Uh, they will go to rescue people that are in these grain elevators that something like that's happened and they're, they're stuck down in the grain and they get them by the arms and try and pull them out. They pull their arms out of socket. All kinds of stuff. It's a dangerous thing. Sometimes you can't pull them out without injuring their legs or, or hurting their back or injuring internal organs. That happens to homesteaders too. It's, it's not a physical thing but it's a mental thing. They get caught in their silo and they can't see a way to dig themselves out. They just want to hear the same thing that they've been hearing for the last five or six years. They're just stuck. Stuck in that silo. They have beliefs that they hold that may be truths or it may be myths. Sustainability, for example. Sustainability is a myth. Okay? Some people talk about, oh, we're, we're going to be sustainable. We're going to be sustainable. You can't be sustainable. It's not possible. Sustainability is a myth. Even hunter-gatherers had to have friends, had to have communities. Everybody was specialized. Okay? Everybody, a lot of people were generalized, but there were several people that were specialized. They knew how to tan. They knew how to, they knew how to preserve meat. Okay, and they pass that on. That's how come in the Middle Ages they had apprentices. Okay, to pass that information on. Because everybody didn't know how. Alright? Do you know how to do you know how to preserve a pig so that it is uh, doesn't need refrigeration? Do you know how to do it? Have you ever done it? Most people have never even thought about it. If you're in an information silo and somebody doesn't believe it the way you do, you won't trust them to show you. It becomes us against them. You won't trust them to show you. So, yeah, you got to stay away from those information silos. It hurts you. It hurts your ability to think. It hurts you all the way around. Uh, I'm a homesteader. I believe in this lifestyle. I believe in it wholeheartedly. And that makes a little bit of a silo. But I also listen to other people outside my silo. I, I listen to information. I listen to the news from four or five different news sources that are not the same bias as me. Okay? I look for research that's happened at a college or university that might not have the same tilt on the way they did things. I like to look at their surveys and see how they came up with their conclusions. Exercise your mind and get out of that silo. That's one of the worst things that can happen. It causes you to believe things and to espouse things that are not true. So, to sum it up, People who are uh, caught in an information silo, homesteaders caught in an information silo, often view others who don't share their opinions as opponents, not as people that they can share ideas with. Me, I like to share ideas with people who don't think like me at all. I like to share ideas with people who are like me. I like to share ideas with people who are diametrically, politically opposed to everything I think. Okay? I like to share ideas with them. It's, it's one of those things, you know. If you don't do that, you start losing brain cells. And the next thing you know, you're talking garbledy goop. Okay? Don't do that. Try to engage with people. Try not to be isolated all the time. Try not to, to just listen to the folks that say what you want to hear. That's the hardest part of it. The hardest part is to not listen, is to not just listen to folks who say what you want to hear. 
because that causes something called confirmation bias. This is what I believe. This is all I want to hear. I don't want to hear any alternative views. Uh, that goes for the way you garden, the way you raise animals, the way you do all that. Okay? Uh, my grandfather raised pigs in a 16 by 16 pen. Okay? Full grown pigs. They lived in there their entire life. Never saw a blade of grass. Never saw ground. That's terrible. That's terrible. But that's the old way they did it. And, you know, I've seen old timers here doing it that same way. Have you seen that? I, I don't I don't think I could do that. I, I feel like it's wrong on so many levels. But they know what to give them when they're sick. They know what to do for them to make it so that they survive longer. So that they can kill them. They know what size pig they want and why. Why do you want a 600 pound pig? Well, I want a 600 pound pig because I want 100 pounds of lard. I want 245 pound lard stands okay there are reasons that they do things the way they do them and if you're not willing to listen then you're cutting off your nose to spite your face cutting off your nose to spite your face knowledge can't be one sided it has to be all sides included Okay? It has to be all sides included. So, try your best to not get an information silo because if you get in there, it's almost impossible to get out. And some of our homestead channels have gone down that road. And uh, so, I just, I watch them very seldom. I watch them every now and then still because I want to see what they're doing. I want to see if they've changed. I want to see if they've, if they've come to their senses. Uh, most of the time, I think it's for monetary purposes. Okay, on this channel, am I monetized? Yeah, I'm monetized, but that's not important to me. The amount of money I make is just negligible as far as homesteading goes. It's just negligible. So, I make a little bit, but, you know, it's not enough to, to worry about. So, and and you can look, there are a lot of... A lot of uh, internet sites that tells you how much we make so you know sixty seven dollars a month or something ain't nothing you know it's it i spend a lot more time making videos than i get paid i may be making a dollar an hour anyhow now if you like this stuff this homesteading do it yourself kind of thing be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe we do this homestead stuff every week, sometimes one, sometimes five videos. Just depends on what's going on in the homestead that week. Now, if you hit the little bell, it'll be right up here. When you come to the channel, it'll notify you when we upload a video. We upload on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, and shorts on Friday and Saturday. So now, it's time for me to get on to the next thing. I love y'all, and stay out of them silos.